You know, here at the Kentucky Field Studio, we get all kinds of mail. You, you can't imagine the piles of ones that didn't get away and people wanting to share in their deer hunting stories. And we get this kind of stuff all the time, and I just love looking through it. Look here. Here's a fella named of Trey Moore, for example, who sent me a nice picture of an 11-pointer. And we get emails all the time. And every now and then you get rumors of big deer being killed. And recently, there started to be some buzz about this big deer. Look what a deer. I mean, look at this drop tan. And the mystery of this picture, you know, we don't see anybody's face. There's somebody standing back here. You see this huge deer with this huge drop tan and all this. I mean, you don't know how wide he is because you don't have anybody standing right there. So we had all these people saying, oh, here's this deer. Here's this deer in Kentucky. Well, the rumors started flowing. Okay, this deer was taken in Ohio by a fella, by an Amish fellow. Then we found out there actually was a deer taken in Ohio by an Amish fella that was huge. So that brings us back to this deer. Where did this deer come from? So this story continued to grow and we didn't have an answer. So I called Tina Brungis, who's in charge of the deer and elk here at Fish and Wildlife. And she referred me to Rebecca Clark, who's a naturalist there at uh, Penny Row. Rebecca Clark sent me to Joe Wilson who uh, wrote a newspaper article and gave me the name of the fella who took the buck. His name is Dan Miller. So we traveled to Hart County, right in the middle of Amish country there, and met up with this fine individual. Now part of the mystery and intrigue of this story is we don't see anybody in this picture. Now, there's not anybody in this picture for a reason. The Amish don't like to have their picture taken. So, in this story, I talked to Dan. You'll hear his voice, but just like this picture, you won't see him. The wind was right going in, plus I could see the, uh, the opposite hillside and, and there was uh, big, old acorn, uh, big old white oak trees and, and there was cover, but yet there were openings. And I just sat there, I, just, I was tired and I sat down and just really rested for about maybe 45 minutes later after I got settled, which was 10 to 3. You know how it is when all of a sudden you know you're not alone? <laughs> And uh, I looked over there, maybe 70 yards, and in one of those openings, he stood. And he was looking the other way. And of course, you have to have the 15-inch antler spread. So that's the first thing I looked for with antlers. And I saw he had them, but he had his head down, so I didn't know how much. And he just picked his head up, looking away from me. And I knew, I, I knew he had enough, but I didn't realize you know, it was that special. <laughs> I shot him, uh, maybe I was thinking more like Bo yet, because I did get him a little far back. I got a liver and one lung, turned out later. But he just disappeared. Now what did you shoot him with? Seven millimeter mag, savage, 70 yards, 70 yards probably. So I walked over there and no deer. But I could see where there was a round spot of blood splattered over onto a dead trunk. And so I knew he was hit pretty good. You know how it is when you're thinking he's going to be right up ahead? That's the way I went down that draw. And I knew he was just going to be right ahead of me. And I couldn't find him. It took me 20 minutes down the draw, and I finally walked both sides of it looking down in. But uh, I finally went back to where the blood trail was, where I hit him and got down and just trailed him. Uh, somewhat hands and knees, not completely, but I had to go down and really look. And I, maybe 150 yards from where I hit him, I got to a bed where he had lain. And there was some blood there, but he, had, he was out of it. And I thought, oh, no. But I uh, thought, well, the way it is here, he, he would go downhill. So I turned that way and, and just looked, and there he was. I didn't know what to do. I started counting points, and I didn't know that I want to gut him. I had my knife out. I remember that and back in. And, how am I going to drag this thing? I'm down in the hole here. I got an hour to get him out before dark. I don't know where the other guys are. Did you realize how big he was? No, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't think in terms of that big. I just knew he was the nicest one that I had ever shot. <laughs> and I was real excited. Martin Meredith. Dan Barber, nice to meet you. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this guy right here, that was almost an urban legend. Yeah, You know what? Much. I got the email, I now I got another email. Oh, we heard about this, we heard about that. Oh no, this guy, this deer was actually killed in Ohio. Oh no, it's Kentucky, I'm not sure. Research on top of research. I got a hold of a newspaper guy who finally get, gave, gave me your name. I called you, you gave me Dan's name. Yep. And it's like, man, we gotta tell his story. 
the picture really doesn't do him justice. Uh, and it doesn't. You're right. Because the first night I saw it on the internet, I thought the drop time was about half that long and half that diameter. And it just, and when I walked up and saw this deer, I thought, oh my. Mm -hmm. And I've mounted over 45 Boone and Crockett deer. My father was a conservation officer. I grew up around Mammoth Cave National Park. And I've seen a lot of deer in my life, a lot of deer. But he's a head and shoulders above everything. Hey, uh, aren't you glad somebody like Dan Miller got him? Nice guy. Yes, he is. You know, and a lot of people, you know, you see a lot of people, I've been pretty proud and he's pretty modest and calm and he's just a super nice guy. Yeah. In Kentucky, he's probably gonna fall number two, number three of the uh, second or third biggest non-typical deer killed by, by a hunter. I feel indebted to the, you know, the wildlife people for the opportunity to hunt in an area that has access to a deer like this. Because otherwise I'd have never, this, you know, I'd have never seen it. Now the biggest non-typical deer was found dead. Now this wasn't taken by a hunter, but this was the biggest non-typical found in the state. Now here is the second biggest taken by a hunter. Now look at the size of that. Now the jury's still out on this guy right here, the Dan Miller buck. It green scored in the 250s. Now that's not an official score, so the jury's still out, but this is one massive deer and we can't wait to find out what the results are. Now one thing we do know, that this for sure is the biggest deer ever taken on a wildlife management area.